Section 22 of Violets and Other Tales. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by James K. White, Chula Vista. Violets and Other Tales by Alice Moore. Section 22 The Bee Man and Amid the Roses. The Bee Man. We were glancing over the mental photograph album and commenting on the great lack of dissimilarity in tastes. Nearly everyone preferred spring to any other season, with a very few exceptions in favor of autumn. The women loved Mrs. Browning and Longfellow. The men showed decided preferences after Emerson and Macaulay. Conceit stuck out when the majority wanted to be themselves and none other and only two did not want to live in the nineteenth century. But in one place, in answer to the question, whom would you rather be if not yourself, the answer was, a baby. Why would you rather be a baby than any other personage? queried someone glancing at the writer, who blushed as she replied. Because then I might be able to live a better life. I might have better opportunities and better chances for improving them and it would bring me nearer the twentieth century about eight or nine years ago said the first speaker i remember reading a story in a magazine for young folks it was merely a fairy story and perhaps was not intended to point a moral but only to amuse the little ones it was something on this order once upon a time there lived in an out-of-the-way spot an ancient decrepit bee-man how old he was, no one knew. Whence he came, no one could tell. To the memory of the oldest inhabitant, he had always lived in his dirty hut, surrounded by myriads of hives, attended always by a swarm of bees. He was good to the bits of children, and always ready with a sweet morsel of honeycomb for them. All his ambitions, sympathies, and hopes were centered in his hives until one day a fairy crept into his hut and whispered you have not always been a common bee man once you were something else tell me what i was he asked eagerly nay that i cannot do replied the fairy our queen sent me to tell you this and if you wish to search for your former self i am to assist you you must search the entire valley and the first thing you meet to which you become violently attached that is what you formerly were and i shall give you back your correct form so the next morning the bee-man strapping his usual hive upon his back and accompanied by the fairy in the form of a queen bee set out upon his search throughout the valley at first he became violently attached to the handsome person and fine castle of the lord of the realm but on being kicked out of the lord's domains his love turned to dislike the bee-man and the fairy travelled far and wide and carefully inspected everything they met the very imp the languid young man the hippogriffith the thousand-tailed hippopotamus and many other types until the bee-man grew weary and was about to give up the search in disgust but suddenly, amid all the vast halls of the enchanted domains through which they were wandering, there sounded shrieks and wails, and the inmates were thrown into the greatest confusion by the sight of the hideous hippogriffith dashing through, a million sparks emanating from his great eyes, his barbed tail waving high in the air, and holding in his talons a tiny infant. Now, as soon as the bee-man saw this, a great wave of sorrow and pity filled his breast, and he hastily followed the monster, arriving at his cave just in time to see him preparing to devour his prey. Madly dashing his hive of bees into the hippogriffith's face, and seizing the infant while the disturbed and angry bees stung and swarmed, the bee-man rushed out, followed by the very imp, the languid young man, and the fairy, and made his way to the child's mother just as soon as the baby was safely restored the bee-man ruminated thoughtfully a while and finally remarked to the fairy do you know 
of all the things i have met so far i like the baby best of all so i think i must have been a baby once right you are assented the fairy i knew it before but of course i couldn't tell now i shall change you into your former shape but remember you must try to be something better than a bee man the bee man promised and was instantly changed into a baby the fairy inoculated him from harm with a bee sting and gave him to the rescued infant's mother nearly a cycle passed by and one day the fairy having business in the valley thought she would make inquiries concerning her protege in her way she happened to pass a little low curious hut with many beehives about it and swarms of bees flying in and out the fairy tired as well as curious peeped in and discovered an ancient man attending to the wants of his pets upon a closer inspection she recognized her infant of years ago he had become a bee man again it points a pretty little moral said the fatalist for it certainly proves that do what we will we cannot get away from our natures it was inherent in that man's nature to tend bees being was the occupation chosen for him by fate and had the beneficent fairy changed him a dozen times he would ultimately have gone to being in some form or other the fatalist was doubtless right for it seems as though the inherent things in our nature must come out but if we want to dig deep into the child's story for metaphysical morals does it not also uphold the theory of reincarnation the ancient bee man perhaps is but a type of humanity growing old and settled in its mode of living while the fairy is but thought whispering into our souls things half dread half pleasant there are moments when the consciousness of a former life comes sharply upon us in swift lightning flashes too sudden to be tangible too dazzling to leave an impress or mayhap in troubled dreams that bewilder and confuse with vague remembrances if only a burst of memory would come upon some mortal that the tale might be fully told and these theories established as facts it would unfold great possibilities of historical lore of literary life of religious speculation amid the roses there is tropical warmth and languorous life where the roses lie in a tempting drift of pink and red and golden light untouched as yet by the pruning knife and the still warm life of the roses fair that whisper come with promises of sweet caresses close and pure has a thorny whiff in the perfumed air there are thorns and love in the roses bed and satan too must linger there so satan's wiles and the conscious stings must now abide the roses are dead end of section 22 recording by james k white chula vista end of violets and other tales by alice moore